reflective of the overall situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Tensions broke out also and intensified in Srebrenica. Prior to the outbreak of the conflict, approximately three quarters of the 37,000 inhabitants of Srebrenica municipality were Bosnian Muslims, and one quarter uh, was Bosnian Serbs. During the early months of 1992, Serb paramilitaries arrived in the Srebrenica area and began with the help of the JNA to distribute arms and military equipment to the local Bosnian Serb population. On 18 April 1992, Srebrenica was forcibly taken over by the Bosnian Serbs. Madame Asher will now uh, put on the Elmo a aerial photo of Srebrenica town, which will give you an impression of a visual impression of, of uh, the town itself. Uh, uh, with an indication of some of the landmarks that I will be referring to as I proceed with the summary. So on the 18th of April 1992, Srebrenica was forcibly taken over by the Muslim uh, Bosnia, Bosnian Serbs after most of its Bosnian Muslim inhabitants had fled. However, a sporadic resistance from small groups of Bosnian Muslim men inflicted losses on the Bosnian Serb side. After one of the leaders was killed in an ambush on the 8th of May 1992, the Serb forces retreated from Srebrenica, leaving a lot of destruction behind, and the Bosnian Muslims returned to the town. Although they had retaken Srebrenica, the town itself remained encircled by Serb forces. Between June 1992 and March 1993, Srebrenica and other isolated patches of Bosnian Muslim-held land in the area were subjected to Serb military assaults, resulting in a great number of refugees and casualties. During this time, a number of Bosnian Serb villages and hamlets were raided by Bosnian Muslims, mainly in search of uh, food, but also to acquire weapons and military equipment. In late January or early February 1993, the Bosnian Serbs started a major offensive against Muslim-held territory in the area, taking over many villages and considerably reducing the overall size of the Srebrenica enclave. This is referred to uh, in the judgment as the Serb Winter Offensive. In the second half of 1992 and in early 1993, several tens of thousands of refugees arrived in and lived crammed inside the town of Srebrenica and its surrounding area. Conditions of life in Srebrenica were dire and horrid. There was a constant and acute shortage of food bordering on starvation, and hygienic conditions were appalling. In the winter, people were living in the streets in freezing temperatures. The situation had deteriorated dramatically when in March 1993, an Ampre delegation headed by French General Philippe uh, Morillon succeeded in bringing most of the fighting to a halt and to secure some humanitarian relief. In April 1993, Srebrenica was declared a safe area by the Security Council of the United Nations. In the spring of 1995, the accused was called to Tuzla and did not return to Srebrenica. The subsequent fate of Srebrenica has been the subject matter of other judgments of this tribunal and has not been dealt with in this case. I'll deal now with the structure of the Srebrenica military and civilian authorities. By 18th April 1992, the day Srebrenica fell to the Serbs, 
nearly all representatives of the municipal authorities had left town. After Srebrenica wars were captured by Bosnian Muslims in May 1992, a pressing need was felt to organize an effective defense. On 20th May 1992, an informal group of Bosnian Muslim men who had already set up individual fighting groups in the area met in the nearby hamlet of Bayramovici to establish the Srebrenica TO staff. The accused who was present during this meeting was elected as commander. His appointment was subsequently confirmed by Sefer Halilovic, chief of the Supreme Command Staff of the Army of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and by Alija Izetbekovic, the president of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. On uh, the 3rd of September 1992, the Srebrenica TO staff was renamed Srebrenica Armed Forces Staff. During this time and thereafter, meetings were held regularly in an attempt to achieve cohesive military activity. Until demilitarization in April 1993, military authority in and around Srebrenica was never incorporated under a single unitary command. During this period, initiatives such as the creation of, the, of a sub-region and a so-called Drina division were conceived, both intended to group together Bosnian Muslim fighters in the municipalities of Srebrenica, Zvornik, Vlasenica and Bratunac with a view to improving defense capabilities. However, the sub-region never materialized and the so-called Drina division did, not, did little to bring together the various fighting groups operating in the area. In the spring of 1992, fighting groups had been formed on territorial bases and local leaders were chosen for their personal qualities such as courage and achievement. Consequently, a number of them, including Atif Akif Ustic, Hakia Meholic, Ahmutihic, and Ayub Golic, to name a few, asserted independence in the early days of the conflict and persisted, persisted in this attitude throughout the period relevant to the indictment. The Srebrenica Armed Forces also lacked the characteristics of a fully organized army. With few exceptions, they lacked weapons, and uniforms and fighters, for the most part, resided with their families or in makeshift accommodation. Communications, both within Srebrenica and beyond, were greatly impaired by the unavailability of adequate equipment, lack of electricity, and the severing of phone lines. In the summer of 1992, authorities were established in Srebrenica town in an attempt to restore law and order and to give some sense of normalcy to life in a besieged and isolated enclave. On the 1st of July 1992, the Srebrenica military police were established by the Srebrenica TO staff and Mirzat Halilovic was appointed its commander. He remained in this position until the 22nd of November 1992, <coughs> when he was replaced by Atif uh, Kirzic. Also on 1st July 1992, thank you, the Srebrenica War Presidency was created, assuming all competencies of the pre-war municipal assembly. And, this war, and it was envisaged to be the highest governmental organ on the territory of Srebrenica. Because individuals were often members of both the war presidency and the armed forces staff and attended meetings where issues of both military and civilian nature were discussed, there emerged a gray area where jurisdiction and hierarchy between the two institutions became a matter of disagreement and friction. 
However, it became generally accepted that the Srebrenica War Presidency was the highest authority in Srebrenica, while the armed forces staff gradually asserted its own jurisdiction. The trial chamber assessed the crimes charged in the indictment and the responsibility of the accused against this very specific backdrop. We'll deal now with counts uh, one and two of the indictment, that is, uh, as they are uh, called in the indictment, murder and cruel treatment. I'll deal first with the law, with the legal aspects. Regarding the crime of murder, the prosecution was required to prove the following elements beyond reasonable doubt. First, that the person alleged to have been killed in the indictment is indeed dead. Second, that the death was caused by an act or an omission, notwithstanding an obligation to act, of the accused or by a person for whose acts or omissions the accused bears criminal responsibility. And third, the act or omission was committed with an intent to kill or inflict grievous bodily harm or serious injury in the knowledge and with the acceptance that such act or omission was more likely than not to cause death. Regarding the crime of cruel treatment, the prosecution was required to prove the following elements beyond reasonable doubt. First, an act or omission notwithstanding an obligation to act of the accused or of a person for whose acts or omissions the accused bears criminal responsibility, causing serious mental or physical suffering, serious injury, or constituting a serious attack on human dignity. And lastly, the act or omission was committed with the intent to inflict serious mental or physical suffering or cause serious injury or a serious attack upon human dignity. 